Okay, this despite many economists warning of a looming recession and a shrinking economy. Wages are up 5.1%, but inflation is up over 8%. We'll get the latest numbers next Wednesday. To discuss all the latest on the economy, I'm joined now by financial analyst and president of Zuma Global, and that is Heather Zumaraga. Uh, Heather, um, what is your take on this? this is this the strongest economy in history? No, far from the strongest economy in history. I mean, I, maybe you could argue that like four years ago, but not at this point in time. I do recognize that the U.S. job, uh, the labor market does remain strong. That is the one thing I think keeping us out of a recession. Uh, the unemployment rate did hold at 3.6 percent, but, 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 but. A lot of people dropped out of the labor force, meaning they gave up looking for jobs, as you noted. Uh, we are not back to pre-pandemic levels in terms of those amount of people uh, working that should be working. And so I, I think that's a major problem. The job postings were down from a month prior, and also that participation rate ticking a little bit lower, which tells me either people don't want to work, they've given up, given up looking for a job, which, Bob, doesn't really make any sense because there are so many job openings right now. Yeah. So that headline number might not be as strong as suggested. Yeah, those jobs can go away pretty fast, by the way. I think there are 11.3 million jobs that are open. Now, whether they're better jobs than what somebody has now, that's always a question. Uh, but they're out there, but they can go away if we were in a recession I guess. I mean, th that's the biggest question I have right now, Heather, is... Are we in one? Yeah. Not only are we in one, can we be in one and have low unemployment? Well, I, I think if there's ever a case to be made where you can have low unemployment and be in a recession, that would be right now. Right. Um, that's the only thing saving us, because you look at consumer sentiment, the worst on record, you look at the housing data, significantly weakening, not weakening, not only have mortgage rates doubled since the beginning of the year, but the amount of people looking for homes, uh, applications, applying for homes and or buying and selling homes is down. And if you remember, that was the cause, the leading cause of the 2008 recession when we had a housing crisis. So all of the indicators are weakening. You had a contraction of GDP of 1.6%. And the first quarter, and when we get second quarter GDP, it's expected to be negative. And that would meet the technical definition of a recession. So maybe you're right. Yeah. Look, we have low unemployment, but we've got negative growth in the economy uh, for two quarters in a row, potentially. And uh, that, that would mark the, uh, the recession definition. Yeah, and that shorthand is a definition because there's actually something called the National Bureau of Economic Research. It goes back. But they always do it after the fact and say, well, it started in this month and it ended in that month. But d just because we have to live in a world we can comprehend, two negative quarters in a row. Now, the Atlanta Federal Reserve Heather says that w the, the second quarter GDP was most likely a negative 2.1 percent. Add that right. to the negative in the first quarter, and we are in a recession. And what I'm wondering is if this could be called an inflationary recession, because even if people are, uh, are employed, they're not keeping up with uh, uh, the, the inflation. So it's still a recession. It's just we, one we haven't really seen in our lifetime. Well, and you pointed out when we started the segment that wages have gone up, which is accurate. We saw over 5% wage growth. But if you're making 5% more on your check, you might feel a little bit richer. That number is bigger. But when you go to buy goods and services, it's not because as measured by the CPI up 8.6%, you're at a net negative. You've actually lost 3% plus of your purchasing power. So the numbers, again, are misleading that... Yeah, we have wage growth, but the, the cost of stuff is, is evident for everyday Americans at the gas pump, at the grocery store. And that has skyrocketed. Yeah. You couple that with uh, Bank of America credit card survey said that 1% of spending on credit cards has gone down over the past year. So if we're headed in that direction of reduced spending, higher increased debt, uh, consumer spending, as you probably know, accounts for two thirds of GDP right there. So that's that's a big issue uh, that the White House is going to have to face in the, in the uh, once we get the second quarter data. All right. Heather Zumaraga, always a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. E even though the topic's not a pleasure, right? right. <laughs> but it's always a pleasure <laughs> talking horrible. to you. Yes. You try to carry an umbrella on a rainy day, right? That, that, like, that's right. That, that, exactly. You're our umbrella. So uh, I try. Thank, thank you, you so much.